Hey, what is up guys? Today, we are actually going to make a menu. So a nice menu, something that works with a nice fade animation. As you can tell right here, that's what we had last episode, so that works fine. Now, if we press once, we actually get a nice fading. Uh, well, a fade in, basically. And as you can tell, we get the splash image up here, we get another touch to start. So if we touch pretty much anywhere in the screen, it's going to start the game. And we've also got our four buttons. So the achievement, leaderboard, swap save, and reset save. Now if we wait a little bit, if we wait 5 seconds after the click, it's going to start fading out and it goes back to what we actually had at the very beginning, so we can actually view our tower. And then if we click back up, it pretty much just pops back up. Alright guys, so without further ado, let's get started. What is it guys, welcome back to this game tutorial. Last time we left off, we had a nice start of a menu scene where we would just rotate around our tower and the length of the tower would actually, uh, well actually the offset of the camera would match the length of the tower, the height, the width, all that good stuff. So in this one, we're actually going to start doing some menu, menu pieces. Let's open up our small file right here we've got. It's really, you know, that's that's a draft, that's just a concept, just to lay down some ideas, right? So, today, we are going to tackle the tap once to show the logo, and tap once more to start the game. And actually the whole UI thing, we're just gonna do all of it in one go. Of course, we're not doing the drawing just yet, but we're putting the place orders for later on. Okay, so, let's get started. Menu Manager is going to change quite a bit, we're gonna start by opening it up. And, uh, oh, you know what? Let's uh, let's actually put that on the side for now. Let's just do our UI. Sorry about that. Wrong order. So, um, I'm going to go right here in the hierarchy and right-click UI, add a new canvas. Now, what I like to do is actually call this canvas the UI root. So, I've just renamed my canvas, and then inside of it, make sure that it is uh, the the canvas color is on scale with screen size. Then they ask you for a reference resolution. Since I'm working with the portrait HD, I'll just go ahead and type that in. So 640 by 960. And then I can start actually laying down my UI. Okay, so first element I'd like to have is actually a, um, a splash screen. And since I don't have any image I can put, as for now, I'll just put a panel. So panel, I'll anchor it at the very top here. Now I'm also holding shift while I'm clicking on this, so it sets the pivot point as well. And let's put that on say 500, oops, not not 55, 500. And say the height is going to be 300. So that, that really depends on the size of your uh, splash image. I wanna have a splash image, you don't even have to put one if you wish, but that is my game, so I'll be putting it here. So that's my splash image, it is 100 pixels from the top like this and I'll just add a text to make sure that you know I understand this when times come uh, I'll just type in splash make the scale with the whole thing like so center my text and there we go right so that's that's obvious right that's going to be where my splash image is okay so I'll rename this panel I close this splash what else could we be doing now we need to add a, uh, some text. So I'll just add some text. Actually, I want to add a start button and to do that I will do something a little bit funkier. So I'll just go ahead and add in your UI button. I'll make sure that this button is the whole screen. So stretch on both horizontal and vertical axis. Then after that, I will just put all the values on zero like this. And I will then remove the image component. So we get this kind of result. Now the button is still there, the button still works. If you click on the screen, you're actually going to trigger something, but we don't see the button. That's that's how I'd like my screen to be. So uh, this is the start button. And as for the text, I'll just make sure, because I'll keep the text, I'll just make sure to put something relevant in here. So um, just scale that up, turn that white, and let's just do something like touch to start the game, touch to start. That sounds great, okay, touch to start. Of course, play with the font size a little bit. And then as for the position, maybe center it uh, 
uh, width of 500 as well height of I don't really it doesn't really matter to be honest just put it wherever you'd like since you're scaling with the green the, with the screen size then uh, it's always go going to look similar for all resolutions so as you can tell here it always stays in the center so that's really up to you you just put it wherever you'd like I'll just put mine right about there that sounds great actually and then finally the other buttons that I was talking about, so here they are, that's the reset game button, the achievement button, leaderboard, and maybe the swap um, swap from the cloud saving to the local saving, so I'll actually do that right here. What I decided to do is create a new UI panel, I like panels quite a lot, and I'll just anchor it down this time, so I'm carrying, I'm actually putting the anchor in the pivot point at the very bottom, after that, reset everything on pretty much uh, zero. As for the width, I'm having a bug here. As for the width, I'll be putting this on 550. And maybe the height is going to be like 100, depending on the button size. Right. So here it is. I'll just put it up, say, by 150 in the Y. So they're going to be here. Maybe 150 in height as well. Really depends on your uh, the size of your button, but so we're just gonna keep on going like this these are the buttons the action buttons down there and let's go ahead and create them so the first one is going to be the achievement why not so achievement and inside of that I'll just type in achievement before I go ahead and I create all the other buttons I will add a horizontal layout group to my panel object, so the one that is parent. Now, as you can tell, the achievement thing just um, just scaled for the whole panel, and that's fine. Now, if we go back under achievement, I'll also make sure the text of that is on best fit. Okay, right. So we've got our first button. Let's copy and paste. We now have two buttons. This one is going to be the leaderboard. Text inside of it is going to be leaderboard as well. Now, of course, later on, we won't even have text. We will only have like nice little icons that are going to be self-explanatory, uh, but right now we don't have that just yet. So we just got to proceed with what we have. So um, achievement, leaderboard, swap, save. Same thing, we put the text in here. And finally, the reset, reset, save. And we put the text. Okay. Now, of course, you scale them however you'd wish. Um, I might actually bump them down to 125. It's really up to you. Okay, so what do we have here? If we go back into preloader, we press play. This is what we get. So we got a button in the back that we're clicking right now, but um, we have no action, so you don't really see it. We also have these four front buttons. Now, um, what I'd like to do is actually create the, the exact same effect we have in um, the reference image I put, so the Wind Waker game. So what usually happens is you don't even see the splash, you don't even see any kind of UI element until the user presses on a button. And then he has to press it again to enter the game. That's something I really liked, so I'll be reproduce, reproducing that um, as closely as we can. So back in my menu scene, I will go back on my canvas, the UI root in this case, since we renamed it, and I will add a canvas group. Oh. Canvas group, right, right there. Okay, so the reason I'm using this, and it's a really nice component that I've just, just learned about, is um, you have a alpha component, which is exactly what we'd like, right? So it goes from 0 to 1, and it just controls the alpha. But it also has this interactable boolean, so if I toggle it off, then as you could tell, none of my button actually works anymore. So on and off, and that's really something we're going to be using. So perfect component for us. Let's actually start coding a little bit. We are going to go inside the menu manager. And same thing we did with camera. We're going to add a little section for that for the fade animation section. And um, <laughs> there is quite a lot of feel in this one, so please bear with me. First one being a game object, we're gonna need the root, the UI root object. 
Second one is the canvas group, the component we've just created. So private canvas group, I'll just call it UI root group. Then we need a private float, which is going to be the fade transition float. And then a private bool is the menu available right now, which is going to be false by default. Private bool, fade in transition. Are we currently doing a transition? Oops, false. Then private bool, menu popping. And I'll use this to actually uh, know, is my menu spawning or is it despawning right now? Because if you wait a certain time, uh, the menu should actually go away and go back to its original state. So to say where uh, we, we've only got the camera looking at the turret, right? So this is, by default, this is going to be on uh, true because the first time it's the, uh, the UI is going to be hidden, right? And finally, private float, idle time to fade. And that's what I was just talking about. Um, if you wait five seconds, then UI is going to go back to its original state. So it's going to disappear. And finally, another float, last touch time. Okay, so we've got quite a lot of thing uh, of field to keep. So let's actually go and start working them a little bit. So over here in the start, let's start by assigning the UI root group, which is a uh, which is going to be a component under UI root. So we are going to get it saying. UI root group is equal to UI root, this game object right here that is public, we're going to be setting it in a moment, dot get component, oops, get component, canvas group. And once we have that canvas group, let's go ahead and just modify a few things. So we're in the start right now, whenever the game starts, we'd like this UI group alpha to be on zero, so we don't want to see it. And then just below this, UI, gr UI root group dot interactable is equal to false. So we don't want to be able to interact with buttons we don't see. And uh, let's also make sure that the fade transition is on zero. And that's going to be pretty much it for the start. So let's try it out. Or actually, you know what? Before we try it out, we need to actually set the UI root. So again, something you must not forget. And I'm getting a lot of people like complaining about these kind of errors. So they're really simple to fix. If you have a null reference, it's probably because we have not assigned the thing here. So drag and drop your UI root right in this field. Now we're gonna go back to the preloader, press play, and we've got no menu, and that's exactly what we'd like. Well, assuming that's not what we'd like, but that, that's the code we've written, so everything works fine, right? And uh, cool. So we've got this, we've got a start, update, calculate camera, move camera, those are all camera fields, right? So I'll be sticking them together and just above that I'll be creating some uh, fade transition fields, I mean functions. Let's start with a private void update fade. And you know what, just above that we'll do a private void on touch because that's also directly related to the, uh, the fade. So Let's go back in the update. In the update, we're going to be calling update fade every single frame. And we're also going to be checking, okay, if input dot get mouse button down, mouse button at the index is zero, if somebody clicks or do a touch on a device, because get mouse button down works for both touches and clicks, then we're going to call untouch. Simple, right? So, Inside of untouch, we're going to say last touch time is equal to right now. So time dot time. Whoops, I keep making those tab errors, but that's fine. And um, if you did touch the, the screen, then we're going to say, okay, now the UI root group dot interactable is equal to true. Now you're able to actually click on the buttons. And then we're going to do fade in transition is also equal to true menu available is also equal to true and menu is popping so that's a lot of fields we're going to be turning on uh, whenever we touch and then after that we're going to make sure that our fade transition is not out of boundaries by saying fade transition is equal to mathf.clamp and we're clamping himself so fade transition in between 0 and 1 
So if our fade transition went a little bit beyond 1, so maybe like 1.5, it's going to go back on 1. So we've clamped it. Okay, so we've got a lot of thing happening when we touch. Let's all actually um, let's actually do our update fade now, and we've got to be really careful with this one. My my logic might actually fail as I'm using a piece of paper that I've written a little bit earlier. So let's actually do time dot time minus last touch time is bigger than idle time to fade. So this is basically a uh, cooldown checker. If we if uh, the last time you actually touch minus the current time right now is bigger than idle time to fade. So in between right now and the last time you touch, is it bigger than say five seconds in this case? If so, then that means we're gonna go back into a fading uh, out. So we're gonna, you know, we fade in to show the menu, but then we've been idle long enough. So we're going back to alpha zero. So we're going back to hiding the menu. So we're gonna say fade in transition fade in transition is equal to true because we're starting a new transition menu popping is now equal to false because you're not showing the menu you're actually hiding it now menu available is equal to false and UI root group dot interactable is equal to false okay now say we do have a fade in transition then we can proceed with the rest of this function but in case we don't, let's actually not update it. So say, um, if it's not in transition, so if not fade in transition, then let's do a simple return. Okay. And that is where we actually start incrementing our fade transition. So fade transition plus equal. And then we're gonna be saying, okay, is the menu popping right now or is it hiding? If it's popping, let's actually increment that value. And if it's hiding, we need to decrease the transition. So the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to do a ternary operator. We're going to put menu popping in here. And if menu popping, then we do this, else we do that. Right, so if the menu is popping, we are going to do time dot delta time. Say so we're only going to increase um, by time dot delta time. And if it's decreasing, if it's hiding, let's do minus time dot delta time and maybe we even want to make sure that uh, it goes out say slower than when it came in so when you click once at the very beginning then it's going to pop in one second so from zero alpha to one alpha it's going to take one second now when it's going to start fading let's actually extend that to four seconds so I'm going to do times 0 0.25 okay and then of course we need to modify that um, that alpha, so we're going to do UI root group that alpha is equal to fade transition, and I think we should be ready to go. But uh, we don't have any boundaries right now, so let's do if at very beginning at the very end. Let's do if fade transition is bigger than one or smaller than zero. Now my OR operator doesn't work, so here it is, I copy-paste it. Um, fade transition is smaller than zero. Then if that's the case, let's do fade in transition is now equal to false. And that has been a lot of code. Hopefully everything works on the first go. I'm really eager to try it. So, okay, so constant value true cannot be converted to float. Fade in transition. That's what happens when you have similar names in your fields. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to the preloader, press play, and we don't see the menu. Okay, so now on the first touch, it should take one second to actually see it. And here we go. Now if we wait three, four, and five, it starts hiding for four seconds, and then it's gone. And if I press play once more, it shows back up. Now I'm actually allowed to click at places, so say over here, this pops the achievement, leaderboard, save, swap, save, oh, I've got swap, save twice. Okay, and then if I click somewhere else that is not in the splash or that is not on these buttons, it should actually try and start the game. Now these functions are not coded just yet, so that's the next step we're going to take. And what if I click during the fade out, it's simply going to fade in, back up, basically, so, okay.
we've got the nice fade in out of the way now since this is our main menu he also needs to contain the button action and I'll be putting them into another section here those one needs to be public remember that we're calling them from buttons so we need to be able to assign them to buttons and the only way we can do that is if they are public so public void to game this is going to send the player to the game so do we need yeah we need to include so using unity engine done dot scene management and if we had two game then scene manager dot load scene and we're loading the let's call this the ob scene yep we're gonna be calling this the ob scene so the next one we're gonna work on is actually some kind of hub uh, where we can buy stuff and buy upgrades right so the next button is achievement so let's do achievement button and since we're not really allowed, we're, it's not we're not allowed, it's just that we don't have the services to uh, cover the achievement just yet. Let's just do a debug.log, just to make sure that the button works, right? So debug.log achievement, like so. We're going to copy this over three more times because we got three more buttons. The second one being leaderboard. Uh, third one being swap, save. And the fourth one being reset save okay and I'm also going to change the debug.log to leaderboard swap save and reset save okay so we've got all of these working well not working but we've got all of these in functions we can now go back inside our menu scene and just plug them in so the first thing I'll do is actually correct this mistake I've made here this is reset save okay right so we're gonna take the first button the achievement button go under the unclick event and then hit the plus sign choose the menu manager and drag and drop the menu manager right in here and then since this is the achievement we're gonna find the achievement button function same thing for the leaderboard, so plus, you can also choose it from this menu. Menu manager, leaderboard button, here it is. Swap save. And the swap save button, reset save. Under the reset save button function. And we also need to put the two games, so remember this start button, the one that contains the, the whole screen. Let's go down here, press plus, menu manager once more, and then I'm going to do to game. All right, it's time to test out our things. Let's press play, starting from the preloader. And we are going to click once. Then we should be able to click again, say, on the reset save. And yep, this one is interactable. We can see it work. And as you can tell, we pretty much get a feedback every time we click on the button. Now if we click somewhere else, so in the back here, we're going to be sent to the other scene. Now of course this is going to crash because it's not part of the build setting just yet, but we know it works, we know it has been called. So that's a very good step. And I also think we need to fix a little thing right here. When it starts fading out, you, you're going to be able to see like this flicker, not flicker, but all the button turns from interactable to not interactable and they change color when that happens. I'd actually like to turn that off. So to do this, sorry about the dog, we will go in the back here, we're going to click on the button, and every single button has a press color or a disabled color. Let's just make sure we bump that up to the same exact color we have. Or actually bump it back up to a perfect white or maybe perfect white with no alpha. I'm not quite sure, let me just try again. Oh, we're gonna be starting from the other scene. And the reason I'm not using the exact same color as the other one is because um, when we have icons, we need this to be on, say, perfect white with no alpha or with alpha. We're just gonna make sure in a second. Because the color won't matter when we have, um, when we have actual icons. So I just put it on the white full alpha right there, hopefully everything works.
and yeah so it doesn't it doesn't flicker it doesn't do anything we're gonna go back in our menu scene and make sure that every single one of the disabled color is on pure white with full alpha okay and we don't have to do it for the start button because we don't have any um, we don't have any visual for that one Alright guys, so that was pretty much it for this episode. I hope you learned something. If you did or if you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like. Really appreciate that. And um, of course, subscribe for more tutorials like these. And I will see you guys in the next one.